Now we'll introduce Dr. Sanjoy Saha again, surgical oncologist, to uh, talk about his involvement with this patient and uh, describe a very uh, complex and exciting, uh, relatively new procedure. Uh, Dr. Saha. Thank you, Dr. Hawking. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity. This gentleman was, gentleman was referred to our center with established diagnosis of peritoneal mesothelioma. This disease belongs to a group of uh, diseases called as peritoneal surface malignancy. Peritoneal involvement with the tumor is called as peritoneal surface malignancy. It can be, uh, it can arise primarily in the peritoneum in form of primary peritoneal carcinoma, carcinoma or primary mesothelioma of the peritoneum. This peritoneal surface can also be involved due to the other malignancy in the adjacent organ or the different abdominal organs like uh, cancer of the colon rectum, stomach, ovarian, uh, appendix, pancreas, sarcoma, and those enumerated in the slide. Cytoreductive surgery and hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy is, has emerged as a treatment modality effective in controlling this disease, which is usually has a very dismal outcome. Before I go the details of the procedure, I would like to talk something about the peritoneum. Peritoneum is a membrane which covers the inner, is the inner lining of the abdominal wall and the retroperitoneum, the back of the abdominal cavity, and it also covers, as, covers the different or, uh, abdominal organs. Uh, this has got a unique prop property that it acts as a barrier to the circulation and the drugs circulated uh, in, the, in, in the normal circulation have got a limited secretion into the peritoneal cavity. And hence, when you give the chemotherapeutic agents, the effective concentration in the peritoneal cavity is not achieved and these cells thrive. Other thing is about the hyperthermia. Uh, the heat increases the body temperature and hypothermia can be defined as an increase in the temperature of the body beyond the normal, normally found in the body. Elevated temperature may be limited to a local or regional area of the body or it may be systemic involving the entire body. Now the question is how the hypothermia is utilized in the management of the cancer patients. Hypothermia has got unique general uh, effect on the body that it has got a selective cytotoxic effect or the killing effect on the cancer cells. Um, normally the body tissue can tolerate the temperature up to 45 degrees Celsius without having any major problems and issues with that. But cancer cells cannot tolerate the temperature and we take the advantage of uh, this uniqueness. It also potentiates the effect of other treatment modalities utilized in the cancer treatment like radiation and chemotherapy. Specifically with the chemotherapy as we are going to discuss, it increases the penetration of chemotherapeutic drug into the cancerous tissue, that's one thing. Second, not only it increases the concentration in the tissue, but it also allows the increased concentration in the cells itself because of the increase in the permeability of the membranes of the cells. It also inhibits the repair mechanism of the cells, which they, of these cancer cells, which they utilize to escape the toxic effect or the kill effect of the chemotherapeutic drug. So, in general, in, in totality, it increases the, it, it potentiates the cytotoxic or the kill effect of the chemotherapeutic agents. Besides the effect on the on the cancer cell itself, the heat also has got effect in the in the body in the body circulation itself. Uh, due to the increased heat, the, there's an augmentation of the blood flow in the regular tissue because of the way the vasculature is, and it helps in the dispersion of the tissue, so the effect, the, the net effect of accumulation of heat in the tissue is not as much. But in cancer tissue, this microcirculation is disorganized, and they do not respond as well uh, to the heat by shunting and, uh, and hence uh, they fail to dissipate this heat and this heat gets accumulated and helps, hence uh, affects uh, the, cell killing, the, the cell killing of the, these cancer cells. Uh, 
This gentleman was uh, investigated and he was found to have a localized disease uh, in the peritoneal cavity and was considered to be a candidate for this uh, uh, cytoreductive surgery and hypothermic, chemo, uh, hypothermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy and was suggested to undergo this treatment. This slide enumerates the, the steps on this procedure. The complete cytoreduction means removal of the tumor is achieved. Inflow and outflow catheters are placed. Temperature probes are placed to monitor the temperature. Catheters are connected to the perfusion pump and circuit is completed. And the perfusion with the heated perfusate is done uh, at the starting at the temperature of 42 degrees Celsius and gradually increasing to 45 with the aim to achieve a target temperature of 40 to 43 degrees Celsius. Then the drug is injected in the circuit and perfusion is, con is, con is continued for uh, one hour to two hours, 60 to 120 minutes, depending upon the type of the cancer and the type of drugs used. Thereafter, the drainage of this perfusate is done. The chemotherapeutic agent is removed from the peritoneal cavity. Continuity of the bowel is maintained and anastomosis is performed. And thereafter, we close the abdomen. In nutshell, what we do is the removal of the tumor then through a specialized uh, uh, machine, which is a heart-lung machine, uh, we perfuse this fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Next question comes up, what are the current indication of doing this procedure? And uh, uh, this is the list of the different um, uh, cancers where this has been utilized. It has been highly investigated and effective in the pseudomyxoma peritonei after complete cytoreduction, peritoneal mesothelioma after complete cytoreduction, primary and recurrent colon cancer, and there are subgroups of those cancers where it can be done, enumerated in slide. Similarly, in the recurrent ovarian cancer, with the spread limited to the peritoneal surface. Other conditions like primary gastric cancer after complete reduction and tumor spill uh, during the resection of any recurrent cancer or any perforated cancer as such. Symptomatic malignant ascites, where there's a, a accumulation of large amount of fluid secondary to the uh, cancer and then certain cases of uh, uh, sarcomas where there's a involvement of peritoneal surface and it can be done after the uh, complete cytoreduction. This is one of the modalities which is uh, being investigated. Next question comes up, who are the um, candidates for this, uh, this therapy? This, the candidate selection has to be very carefully done uh, because this is a prolonged surgery and uh, the patient should be in a fit medical condition to undergo this procedure. His medical uh, general condition should be at least Eastern, ECOG, Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group ECOG performs status two or less so that they can undergo the rigors of this uh, uh, long surgery and HIPEC. There must not be any extra abdominal disease. Peritoneal disease must be potentially completely uh, uh, resectable or could be significantly reduced. And there must be no parenchymal, uh, hepatic parenchymal disease. Uh, this is a relative contraindication. If there's a small nodule on the surface, you can resect it. And uh, this, uh, this treatment can be performed. And there must not be any bulky retroperitoneal disease. 